Hello, and welcome back to What's Bubbling in Zim. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're going to take a look at Zim in VR. Whoa, how exciting. That's amazing. Uh, so you can press this banner if you see it, or what's new in Zim 015 up above. And we've added a new Zim in VR panel right up at the top there. We've also done bubblings on Zim in 3JS. And so this was using Texture Active to get interactive surfaces in 3JS. And we did a series of bubblings and explore videos on those. So if you haven't seen that, you should check those out because we're using the same kind of thing in here. We did a premiere video uh, right here, and you can press the demo, the demo example right there. Here's the demo example. It's not really in VR, but it talks about the reasons why we want to have texture actives and use them in VR. So as we scroll up here, we can see examples wee, of um, panels that could be in there, but we can also add content to ZimVR, such as uh, drawing on things and dragging things on walls and any uh, meshes in VR. Okay, we could play games on the panels. I'm just doing a quick uh, review here. The book actually talked about it. So in this book, we, uh, we were in VR and we had a lot of uh, walls that had interactive pieces on it. Interactive works. Let's see if I can find some examples. So you can see in the background here, there's various puzzles. This used to have a slider or a dial, and we could control how these things were made. Here are a bunch of art openings that we had. Again, uh, many of these are interactive artworks uh, inside of VR, but we couldn't actually operate on them. So this picture in behind here had a dial right here. You turn the dial and this uh, changed. So basically it would be nice to have that in VR. And that's basically what we've got here. So now we have an example here and we're going to go over this example in this bubbling. Um, it's right here. So there's a video for both of these and a demo for both of these. This demo that we just looked at was in well, in 3JS, 3D, but in, the, in a flat browser, whereas this is a VR demo, and that looks like this. It's right here. Uh, right now, I'm recording this on the, uh, the desktop, and so it says VR not supported. But if I were in a VR browser, and how to get into a VR browser, you put on a VR helmet, you can look up for, say, uh, I can't remember if it's called the Oculus browser, or the it's a browser that um, is in the store, for instance, it's free. And then you can browse things. And when you do, you would see, hey, open this in VR. So that's one way. You can also uh, link your, uh, with an air link, for instance, you can link to your computer. And when you link to the computer, uh, this is on the computer right now, but this would switch over to VR if you do a refresh. And then you can um, view it with the PC VR, it's called and see, experience that there. There's also a video right here. Uh, there's the video for this, and I'll press that just briefly. And Hello, I'm Dr. Abstract. I guess uh, here we are Dr. Abstract is talking. browser <laughs> in virtual reality, and I can teleport over to this exciting texture active. Ooh. So we're inside of a 3JS, and this is Zim Texture Active, and we can use the controllers, these are the Zim controllers, to move this puzzle about and solve the puzzle. This is a Zim Scrambler, so we have interactive surfaces now inside of uh, 3JS, inside of V. Okay, so I, I think that's probably all we need to watch of that, but you can go check out that video as well. So once again, we've got our own controllers now that um, can operate there. We can also jump about with teleport and move with the sticks of the controller. So I'm gonna get out of here and come on back to the uh, demo, I guess. Um, so here's the demo. That's the texture active. So we also brought in the orbit controls. Oh, and music starting. Ah, music. All right, so um, this is working fine too in just on, on flat screen here, but in VR, you would operate it with the controllers and, and that stuff. So let's go take a look at the code that 
created that VR demo. We'll reduce this down. Uh, let's see, so this is the page right here, vr.html. And you can view the source of that, control U to see the source and grab it. And here we're importing Zim and 3JS version 0.15. So Zim 3, I'm gonna take you through what that imports as well, just give you an idea as well as to how much work this has been to, to put uh, Zim into VR. Of course, much of this is done by 3JS in the first place, and their system is just wonderful. So it's uh, it's really nice that they're working so hard on that. Uh, they can uh, 3JS can also be used with A-Frame, which is a, a tagging language to make VR apps, and Banter, for instance, is using that system. So we look forward to trying out to see if we can get the Zim. VR and uh, our texture actives into banter as well. And so that'll be kind of next on our plate. Uh, right now though, we do have it working in uh, the Quest, for instance, and other headsets, etc. So um, yeah, I'd like to show you before we take a look at the code. So here's the code that we're going to be looking through in this bubbling. It's not that much there. Uh, I'd like to just talk about what has gone into getting this working with Zim, just to give you a quick overview. First of all, in Zim itself, uh, in the Zim docs, without uh, even so, without even bringing in the three helper module. So this is the three helper module, and we'll look at that too. This is just Zim, and we decided that we should have the ability to use texture actives with. Uh, 3JS without having to even bring in the three modules. So it's it's so important that we wanted to make Texture Actives work with just Zim and 3JS, and it does. So there's the Texture Active section. So that's right here, and we'll just scroll through these. And we've already done bubblings on all these things, um, as, as mentioned, and we've got examples there. But we'll just scroll and kind of get a sense of this is the code that was um, used for Texture Actives. Uh, let's see, it was basically a Zim page to make the panel kind of work. So Texture Actives isn't very much, it, it extends the page. Texture Active, uh, singular. Texture Active, plural, is more exciting. It's uh, longer. And we've had to adjust Texture Actives as well to work with VR because they worked with a Raycaster. And so we're scrolling now through the Texture Actives. Uh, just as I get to the apply, we'll see that in here there was, uh, let's see, that's ray ins and ray outs somewhere in here. There's controller lefts and controller y's. So now we're sort of picking up on do controllers exist. So this is the 3JS renderer and it's under this XR thing. So we're getting the controllers and we've got some some stuff there where we're doing either a controller is down and then we're going to do do down. So we've separated this out. If there's controllers, we do do downs. So there's controller movements here. Otherwise, if there's pointers, we um, set XR to false. So that's how we're handling it. We're sort of saying, hey, are we getting XR controls or are we getting traditional mouse pointers? And then based on that, we've adjusted the different ray caster. So that was an adjustment. We had uh, that's an adjustment since the last set of bubblings. We had texture actives working with um, pointers, mouse, mouse pointers, but we had to come in and do some tricky looking adjustments uh, for XR. Luckily, this probably came from somewhere that already existed, so I didn't have to work out, or we didn't have to work out the um, matrix positions, but that's, that's kind of what it all looks like. Ah. Um, all right, so carrying on, the texture actives basically work the same way as, uh, you know, with each. So all we had to do is just adjust where that raycaster was coming from. Was it coming from the VR controllers or the, the mouse downs? And that was texture actives. The texture active manager is the same as well as it used to be. So there's the texture active manager that allows you to change things with Zim in behind. I would suggest probably turning that off or not using it when you're in VR. I, I don't think you'll need to use it in VR. That was for more of a development and you can develop not in VR and probably see what you're doing a bit better. I'm not sure, haven't really tried that in VR, but we turned it off in our example. 
All right, so that's in the Zim docs. Where most of the updates, though, happened is in our Zim 3. So this is our helper module. And in the Zim 3 helper module, we did the Zim, Zim thing where we simplified things. So 3.js has controllers that you can bring in. Um, and there are various ways to move with those controllers. Some people have made uh, examples where you can use the stick to move around. And then there's also ways to teleport an example on a teleport. But all these examples are sort of like you have to kind of do a bunch of steps. So Zim is very good at taking a bunch of steps and turning it into just one or two lines. And that's what we've done here as well. First of all, if you're working in, if you want to work in XR, which is the same as VRAR sort of thing, then you would turn XR on. Uh, this is the 3JS helper module 3 function there. And we're going to see this in our actual code. Uh, this is the behind the scene sort of look. So just quickly, there is that. And here's the XR right there. We have another, uh, I think I've got the bookmark, so I can just drop down to here. We are adjusting the renderer. So the renderer needs XR enabled true. Uh, it was suggested that we provide a buffer scale. So we've defaulted to a buffer scale of twice, and that's what was suggested. But if you want to turn that off, you could pass in a buffer scale and stop that from happening. That apparently will set the quality better when you're in you know, a meta Quest headset or Quest 2, Quest 3, etc. cetera. Uh, there's also this thing called the VR button, which is that little button that you saw. So we're in when we import 3, I'm going to show you that in just a second, the 3 shim. Well, I'll show it to you now, I guess. So when we import zim underscore 3, we're also importing our zim r155 module here the Orbit Controls, First Person Controls, GLTF Loader, and now a VR button. This is a very small file. It's, uh, I don't know, it's 30 lines of code or something like that. So it really, for the convenience of, of avoiding having to import stuff, uh, we just tack it in there. And I, I don't think anybody's going to notice. Same with these guys. We use these a lot. Just for the conveniences of just importing three, we can use these. It, it's a little extra code, but it's not... <laughs> It's you know, a fraction of a fraction of an image, for instance. Um, so uh, we've got this VR button, and that's what was introducing back in the site here. Uh, which one was it? This one right here down below, a little VR button overlay that will say, hey, enter VR. And then once you enter VR, you have the ability to exit VR too. And here it is saying VR is not supported at the moment. Okay, so that's the Zim shim for our 3JS shim uh, that when we use 3JS, we import that. Anyway, that says, uh, or if you don't have it, you can, um, like if you're using not the, the module version of Zim underscore three, if you're in individually bringing in all the files, you, you can also pass that in as a parameter. All right. so. This is a change where we're adding that button, not too much there, but where the change really happens. So all the stuff for anything for um, texture actives was kind of the same as it was before, but uh, F2 here, what we've added are three classes, the XR controllers, which handles the controllers. And well, I'll do the three classes now, I guess the XR controllers, the XR movement, and the XR teleport. So those are the three classes that we've added um, that help have, show controllers, show movement, and show teleport. So let's just take a look and uh, briefly and see what's what's in there. So when we go into the get the controllers, there's a nice way that WebXR or whatever it is in behind the scene, not even 3JS, but even before 3JS, there's a whole bunch of code that says, hey, here's some help with controllers. So 3JS is bringing in help with controllers, uh, as far as I know anyway, and then 3JS is also providing us with, uh, with XR controllers that look something like this. Render XR controller and we can get 
the controller. From that, we've got various data and stuff, so we need two of them. Therefore, we made a function called make controller, and we either get the zero controller or the one controller, as in left controller or the right controller. Okay, and here's the code that is dealing with that. Um, you can pass in, when we make a controller here, you can pass in the type, and there's or an array of types. Um, and you can pass in arrays of colors and arrays of highlight colors or just a color. So there's two controllers. So in each of these things, line color, line length, even threshold, I think, or maybe not threshold. But anyway, in each of these, you can either pass in one thing, in which case it will duplicate it and you'll get two controllers from it, or you can pass in different types. So one could be a sword and one could be a pen, or <laughs> we'll see which one's mightier. Um, or for the type, you can pass in a 3JS model of a controller and there's a set of those uh, I'll show you I'll show you in a bit um, right now I can't remember what it's called but anyway you can do that if you do that it ends up getting added to what's called the grip so if um, there's kind of two ways we found what happened is if we put our own controllers in the grip it worked in um, in the PC VR, so the PC version, it worked just fine. But then when we looked at it in the Oculus browser, it was not centered properly. It was off, it was on a wrong angle. And we're going, oh, for crying out loud. So for one browser, the grip seemed to be angled this way. And for another browser, it's angled that way. And, and instead of dealing with that, we just added our Zim controllers, right? And instead of adding it to a grip, we added it to um, the controller directly. And I guess that, that should be fine. You've got various connected events. You've got um, all sorts of other events too. So here is us getting press downs and press ups and different, the left and the rights. Uh, we've got touches. So there's, um, which ones? Okay, so there's, there's when you press a button and keep on pressing it, or like not keep on pressing it, but you press it all the way down, that's a pressed. But you can also just touch. And that, these things have values. Each of these have a value from zero to one, how much you're touching it. Uh, so there's touches, uh, touch start and touch end. And then there's the axes. The axes are uh, the sticks and there's left and right and up and down. And we're capturing those, all those events. And in some cases we're dispatching events. So we have a set of our own events, which roughly mirror the, the sort of the built-in events, you could call it. All right, we're making a line. So there's us making our own line. Uh, this came from, we kind of split this up into two. It was an example and we split it into controller stuff and movement stuff. So I suppose I put the message about that in the movement side. Sorry about that, thought it was here too. So we brought out the controller stuff and basically kind of redid the events for that. Um, here is us making a custom controller. So that's the line for the controller. Here's a gun and a ray gun. Uh, that it, if it's a gun or a ray gun, then it has a handle, I guess. So that's us making the handle. If it's anything but a line. So if we set type line, oh, this wasn't us making the line. Line probably came up above somewhere. Uh, this is us saying, if it's not a line, then we've got this tube. So all of our controllers have this tube and it ends up looking like a laser. And they'll all have lines as well. Actually, you can turn off the line too. But um, if it's just a line, then we don't even make a tube and we don't make any of these things. But anyway, we start off with a line, or, or sorry, if it's, uh, we start off with a tube. So this will be a tube for everything except when we say, just make a line, <laughs> confusing. And then if it's a gun, we add that stuff. If it's a ray gun, we add these rings. So this is three JS uh, uh, rings. And then uh, if it's a sword, where we add a little kind of like end of the, the, the tube, has a little round bit on it that look, makes it look like a sword. And if it's a pen, then we add this cone to the tip of it. So those are uh, meshes for that. And we're also doing some things on starts and ends. Oh, to set the highlight color. So we've got highlight colors, basically for all of ours, the tube highlights. And I think that's 
uh, pretty neat, pretty consistent. It might have been neat to see some button, like uh, if you press the button, the XR controllers that come with 3JS, it looks exactly like the, the controller, or as close to the controller as it can make it, apparently. There's different types of controllers. And when you press buttons, you actually see the model will press buttons. With us, we've got a tube, and it's possible that we could, or maybe one day, we'll add little buttons to the top of the tubes and sort of mirror those buttons being pressed. But right now, when you when you select or when you select, it highlights a tube, and it kind of just uh, two colors up. All right, and there's us disposing the controllers. Here now, in our little tour, is the XR movement. And uh, where is the URL? Here it is. Okay, so there was a code pen by this fellow. Thank you, Jason, for working out all this. And we've adjusted his example by splitting it into two, so the events are separate, and the... Uh, motion is separate. We also adjusted various things in the motions as well. We're applying various factors and speed factors. This is sort of comes from the example. Everything was put in a dolly and we we're just basically moving it around. This is a stuff I would not have liked to do where we're getting various vectors and it turns out we had to <laughs> fix, fix one of the vectors because it worked great in in 149, um, and then because that's what we were testing with locally, and then when we went and finally did our final uh, versions into 155, it went completely uh, absolute on us. So rather than moving forward from whichever way we were looking, it went forward absolutely. And so sometimes if you turned around and go forward, you'd end up going backwards. And so we had to figure out how to fix that. And the answer was basically, um, there's the dolly. Where is it in here? There's the dolly direction fix. Yeah, we had to add a box to the camera. And then we're grabbing this uh, world direction from the box, from the whatever BG stands for. What the heck did BG stand for? I don't know. <laughs> Back. I can't remember what it stands for. Box something. <laughs> I can't remember why we called it BG. But anyway, um, instead of grabbing it from this, which didn't work, it worked in, S in, in R149, but it didn't work in R155. So, you know, it's a bit of hacky going on. And we provided a way to go backwards if you really wanted to use this stuff with R149 or something, or which I'm not even sure where it changed. It <laughs> I don't know, but I know in, in 155 it works with this, in 149 it works with that. So we provided that as a, a fix of some sort, okay, parameter. And then we've got horizontal movements, we have vertical movements with different hands, and so we're going through that stuff. We're, uh, we added a max, which is nice. So this is you know, what Zim is really good for, taking, <laughs> taking things that are... Uh, complex examples and abstracting them into classes and then adding more features to it. So now you can specify a radius and when you're using your motion you won't be able to go beyond that radius and that's really handy. We, we needed that the very first thing we built um, because uh, we didn't want to go outside of the surrounding model, like our, well, mesh, I guess. We have this uh, mesh, which is like a skybox almost, but we brought it in so that it makes it look more 3D. If it is a skybox, sometimes you can't, even, you can't even see the skybox move. It's so far away. But if you want to be inside of a room, we brought it in closer, but the problem with bringing it in closer is that we could move through the wall and be on the outside of it. And we didn't want that. So we've now put a limit on how far we can go, and that's great. Um, there's haptic motion as well, so separated that out a little bit into its own function that we could call if we wanted to. So that was the movement, and here's the teleport. Uh, this came from another example with teleport, but again, we've added options for different things and uh, just made it a little bit, uh, we'll, we'll be able to use one line or two lines to make our teleports work rather than have all of this stuff in the teleport as well. So uh, you would provide a floor or multiple floors. So we handled it so that you can have an array of things. And then here's the teleport 
stuff. Um, we did put in a marker uh, and didn't provide too much in terms of customizing what the marker looks like. Right now it's just sort of a round circle and uh, most likely that's fine. Maybe one day we'll make it be able to have rings. You can change the color of it. You can change the alpha of it and the blend mode of it. And that's probably enough, I think. This gets a ray caster as well. And we're dealing with some stuff like that when we press... Oh, we made it so that uh, you can provide whatever buttons you want. And that's that's very handy. So they had the teleporter working on a select button and we're selecting things with the select button. It was okay. We made sure that if we're on texture actives... Oh, that's another thing that we did. We made it so that... Uh, you can, this XR teleport, um, if it, you set it to false, then it will, or there was another one too, I can't remember which, which one it is. There's a user control on there. Here it is, XR teleport ignore. So if you want to be able to teleport through objects, you can say, hey, set the user data of that object to XL, XR teleport ignore. Uh, true, and then you'll be able to teleport through that object. Uh, but by default, you can't teleport through other objects. And we had to fix that up because you were tell there in the example you could teleport through objects, and we didn't want that. So we had to figure out how to do that and put that in here. Uh, anyway, great, there it is. So that's the additions that we added: how to teleport, how to move our controllers as well as uh, we went through roughly what the uh, texture active stuff looked like or looks like. What we didn't see, I suppose, is the texture active stuff that was in that we added to create JS so that we could bring in uh, X and Y values from other places, other places like the ray casters of, um, of mouse uh, presses or whatever uh, on 3D work on 3D materials and the ray casters of XR uh, tele, um, uh, controllers. So that's that was all worked out in CreateJS as well. Uh, it's maybe know, 50 to 100 lines of code in there to kind of handle all of that stuff. Um, okay, now, ladies and gentlemen, this is bubbling, not an explore. So sort of, we should have uh, not explored so much maybe. <laughs> but if you're still with us, here's the results. We don't have to look at any of that stuff that we just um, did there. We bring in 3JS. In our example, we're bringing in a picture of Dr. Abstract, that's me, uh, made by an AI, and some intro music that's held in the assets. You may be coming from uh, 3JS side. Uh, welcome, welcome to Zim. You should probably take a look through the Texture Actives bubblings. You certainly should do that. And the Texture Actives Explorers. We don't want to spend a total amount of time look, you know, explaining that all again, but we will look through it briefly here. Here's the Texture Active that will hold the puzzle. In other words, this is that... Now let's pull it up for a sec. Uh, this thing right here. So this is a Texture Active panel called puzzle at the moment. We're going to put uh, a logo in there. We're also going to put a puzzle in there. Oh, darn, the music came back. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. There is uh, something on the back of it as well. Uh, this was the demo right here. There's something on the back of it as well. That's the backing panel. Both of those are slightly curved. And then there's a skybox that we're looking in. That's that room that we mentioned. And when we're not in VR, we can't move around. Oh, actually, we could move around, right? So we could go over and we'll see outside the room. There, now we're outside the room and we look back and there's, the room happens to be a sphere. <laughs> so I didn't put a limit on on that. Where the heck are we now? Let's just refresh. Uh, that was strafing there to, to go sideways on that. But when you're in VR, what we did is there's a floor. You can't quite see it because it's very... Uh, oh, transparent, I guess. Uh, but it, it sort of goes up to the edge of the circular mod model, and that floor is what we can teleport on. And then we made it so that we can't go beyond a radius when we're using the thumbsticks to move. So in VR, we can't really get out of here. All right, so we're talking about the texture active parts here. Uh, this is the texture active. 
and then we're adding things into it. So Texture Active also has a make logo and that makes our nice Texture Active logo. You probably won't need that. But that's the logo being positioned. And then here's the Zim Scrambler where we're chopping up Dr. Abstract into two by 10. If we wanted to, we could go 20 by 10. And here's what that would look like. We save this up. I'm not looking at the local version. So I see the local version, open in default browser. And now we have uh, lots of uh, little puzzle pieces there. Oh my goodness, I would not want to be doing that puzzle, I don't think. Okay. So uh, that's the scrambler. We're scaling it to our puzzle, which is our texture active name for that whole panel there. 90% or 90%. We're centering it on the puzzle and moving it. That's it done. That makes the puzzle. We can find out when the scrambler is complete and then we're going to animate the canvas window. So when we solve that, it spins it. Do you want to see it? We'll go by a two by two puzzle here and open in default browser. <laughs> nice. Okay, so now we've got a two by two puzzle and are you ready? It's complete and it spins the, uh, the puzzle thing for us. There it chops it up again and uh, let's see. Quite. Okay. Sorry, I have to keep on closing it because otherwise the sound goes. Uh, we could have easily put in something to turn on or off the sound. Uh, maybe we'll do that one day on this example. Just kept it simple at the moment. We do have other texture active examples that have that. So in the new features, this one right here. If we scroll down, these are texture actives. This one of these had a sound right here. Okay, so we press on here and here's the sound. Now we have the organ sound coming in and we toggle that. So this is with a HUD, right? And we could make the HUD always follow us in VR as well and have this stuff always around the edge. Or we could have attached it to the controller or something like that to make the sound toggle on and off like so. Okay, so um, that's when it's finished. What we're doing is we're animating that whole uh, canvas window. What's the canvas window? The scrambler dot on complete. I thought we would have had to animate the other side too. Oh, uh, right, no, 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 I get it now. Um, the canvas window down below is right here. The canvas window is the mesh, the mesh that holds the puzzle. So that's what we're spinning. No point in spinning the back of it. Oh, well, actually, there might have been a point in spinning the back. I didn't think of that. That's maybe why it... I don't know. No, it, 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 it's fine. Okay. So anyway, we just span the... Spun, span. <laughs> we spun the front of it. <laughs> Uh, okay, after waiting a little bit and we're ch changing the rotation 360 times 3 radians with the back out and that's what kind of makes it, um, that's the ease on it in this time. And when we're done, we're making sure that it's set, uh, we're making sure that it's set at zero and we're also um, scrambling. So this is what is scrambling the scrambler. <laughs> uh, this is how long it's going to scramble for. This is how long do we wait before it scrambles? So it's going to spin, then it waits two seconds, and then it scrambles, and it's going to scramble three times. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. All right, so that's scrambler stuff. Um, when we mouse down on the scrambler, we're starting the audio because you're not supposed to play audio until you interact. So we're starting uh, our intro audio when we mouse down on the scrambler. We're running that only once. So this is the on method, which captures an event such as a mouse down. And the fourth parameter there, here's the first parameter, here's the second parameter, third and the fourth. If you set it to true, it will only run that event once, which is good. And then we're putting a background on that rectangle that's just slightly smaller than, uh, we just wanted a background color to that. And do we have an example? So you see how there's orange underneath it? Ah, oh, the sound is playing again. There's orange underneath it right there. And we found if we made it exactly the same size as the puzzle, you can see kind of like just a little bit of bleed of orange on the edge. So we just made it slightly smaller than the puzzle. That's all. OK. 
Okay, uh, that's that stuff. Here's the backing panel. And there's the Texture Active Make Backing. So we have in the Texture Active itself, we've got a Make Logo right on the class itself. And we've got a Make Backing. The backing does this thing called Zim Canvas Window. Uh, demo. There it is. Canvas Window. So that will fit on any of your backings. Like that. Nice, huh? You don't have to use that, but... Moving. Okay, so uh, let's see. That's the panel. So that's all the Zim stuff. And now we move down into the 3JS stuff. And here is us. In each of these cases, each of our classes, we put what parameters are there, but you can grab them from the docs and read about the parameters and all that kind of stuff. There, but we have put the parameters for, for that one. Here's the XR controllers. There's the XR movement, the teleport and a texture actives at the bottom. Okay, so that's what we're about to look through. In 3.js, this is the Zim 3 helper module. We're saying the width, the height, the where we want the camera to start. Uh, that was a bit of a twist, I guess. It seems that when you're here looking at it, it looked fine like this. But as soon as I jump into 3.js, or sorry, into VR, it was like right in my hip face and I couldn't see. So we wanted to move it. We wanted to leave it here like this, but then kind of move it back roughly like that when we arrive. So we made, uh, we positioned it here for how we want to see it. You also have to turn texture active true and XR true onto our three to support those, both of those. What this does is it gives us a render, a scene and a camera. And we're storing those in local variables. So that saves, I don't know, maybe 10 lines of 3JS stuff, maybe more. There we are adding the skybox from that picture. Here we are adding the floor. And we've set the, the floor to be quite transparent like that. Um, anything to do here. We put the floor down lower. So this is where the teleporter is going to hit the floor. So basically the teleporter hits the floor. Uh, but we don't actually want to teleport to the floor. And so that, I don't know if you remember it from the video, the floors down below a bit more. And if you end up teleporting down, you're, when you look at this, you're going to be, can I strife going down? Let me just, it's going to be like this. It's like, okay, here I am. And oh, there it is up there. So we figured that that might happen a fair bit where what you're teleporting to, you want to be up higher than the floor. So we don't want to teleport directly at the floor. And what we did is we made it so that you could pass in a, um, an offset, and we'll show you that when we come to the teleport thing. So there's the floor, here's the orbit controls, here's the XR controls. So to get those controllers, there's laser. Ah, oh, darn, we won't be able to see. It would have been nice to have some way to show you the other controls, but what we can do is, let's just go to the controller docs here. So this is the docs on the controllers, and in here is a picture. This picture right here shows you the various buttons and stuff of the controls. Okay, so if you want to access the uh, the various buttons or know what they are, this is button zero on both of them. That's the trigger. So these are two different types of controls. One is a, a basic one, one's a complex one. We have a complex one on the Quest, and it has a, a stick here. So as opposed to a little touchpad. And then we also have AB buttons or XY buttons on the other hand. And these buttons you can't use, but those are ABs are four and five. The uh, squeeze, they call it, I always called it a trigger, but no, not a trigger, a bumper. But the squeeze is number button number one. So there's zero, one, what's two? Two is pressing on that. So we tend not to use it if we're down here. So that gives you an idea of your numbers. When we teleport, oh, I had mentioned that the example we got was teleporting from the trigger, which is okay. Uh, I'm used to alt space and it was it was a great setup, better than VR chat by far. Um, VR chat, you have to switch modes to be able to teleport or to move with um, uh, alt space. 
you could both teleport and move without having to switch modes. It's ridiculous. Hopefully they'll fix that if they haven't already. I haven't been, haven't been in VR chat. I haven't been in VR for seven months. Well, kind of working on this a little bit. Also trying to get an avatar made and a few other things like that. But anyway, uh, this is how we teleport. Um, so the example is kind of set up with the B button. It's just, it seems natural. It's sort of you pushing forward with your thing rather than the trigger, but you, you can do both as a matter of fact. So if you pass in an array with both this, uh, both uh, five, or maybe we did it with four, I can't remember, uh, five, I think, and zero, then it will teleport with both those. Uh, neat, huh? So that's that picture. May as well leave that on there. Uh, but what were we looking at? Oh, I was, I was mentioning, darn, we can't, we, we don't have any pictures. So we should somehow take some pictures of that. Uh, I suppose we could pr just provide the, you know, what those model or the meshes look like that we made. So you get an idea of the different types. But there's, there's a bunch of them. There's a pen. There's a gun. Sorry, uh, uh, you know, we're peaceful. Uh, but whatever. <laughs> It's squirt gun. Yay, squirt gun. Uh, then there's a ray gun, which shoots ray love 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 rings or something. <laughs> it doesn't, but <laughs> remember, we're peaceful. Uh, so ray gun, and what else? A pen. Did we mention this is a laser, a sword, and if you just put in line, then it will only leave the line. And like we said, here's the, oh, here's that thing that I was trying to remember before. <laughs> now do you see why I couldn't remember it? It's the XR Controller Model Factory. And that, if you do that, pass in an array with two different models. We found we were having problems cloning the model. It uh, was, it wouldn't clone its, um, its highlights or something. So we, anyway, pass in two different models, make it twice. And it, you'll see there, there are three JS examples using this. And uh, it's a few lines of code to make a model. And then you could pass in your two models right there. Instead of the string laser, you pass in two models. And if you want two different things, there, there that would be a laser and a pen. Or you could have a normal gun, gun and a ray gun. Uh, if you can spell ray gun. And also, uh, alternatively, you could pass in a negative one here and you get no controller and a ray gun on your right hand side. Okay, so those are some options. That's a laser in both hands. Once the controllers, are, uh, this I think is important. We tried to make it, we tried to make it so it wouldn't really matter, but it turns out before we can do the movement stuff, we're passing in the controllers to the movement, we're passing in the controllers to the teleport. Uh, before those work properly, they need to be connected. And we could have added, I don't know, maybe we will one day, but we could have added a polling system that said, is it connected? Is it, con you know, you've asked for it. Is it connected? And once it's connected, then init or, you know, run a function. We didn't bother. No, should we change that? Uh, who knows? If you come to this example in the future and we don't have this in the event, the connected event, then that means we added the polling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, we were running the connected event anyway to move things and also to put in some instructions and a few other things there. But uh, we'll take a look at that in a sec. But uh, how we've got it at the moment is we need to wait for the controller to be connected before we try and instigate the movement and the teleport. That's not the end of the world, huh? All right. So anyway, here's the movement where we're passing in our three object as well. Do we have to do that in here? Yep. So in all cases, we have to pass in the three object that we're using. That's right here. Okay, because that sort of makes use of things initially inside of three. We're passing in the controllers and a speed, a rotation speed, and a radius max. So there's that radius max. Note that the 40 radius max is very similar to our circle geometry on the floor has a radius of 40. And the skybox indeed is 50. So the, the skybox has a radius of 50, the sphere. So it's a little bit bigger than how far we can move. 
and there's the floor. That's how we'd be able to teleport on the floor. And then we're setting the um, max radius of our movement there. Isn't that handy? That's cool, huh? So there's a few other parameters in there that you can check out as well. Oh, the example that we uh, used had the left hand when you used and the left hand when you went your your stick up and down, it lifted you up, it elevated you and lowered you. Uh, eventually, we'll probably add a fly, so a fly mode where wherever you're looking, it would fly to there. You just go to where you're looking. Uh, we had that in in alt space and it was fun, it was handy. Most of the time we stayed on the ground, but some worlds you had the flight turned on. Um, in this case, uh, maybe you, you can do it right away. You could fly right away by setting uh, the vertical strafe to true. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. All right, so by default it's false. Uh, and instead, on the left hand, when you go forward with the stick and backwards with the stick, you're actually moving. So both the sticks, if you push forward on either of them and backwards on either of them, you're moving forward or backwards. But you could make the left hand controller move you up, a strafe up. Rather, The left hand controller will strafe left and right uh, as you go left and right. But you can make it strafe up if that is even such a thing. <laughs> uh, then you can go up and down like that too, if uh, if you want. Uh, the right hand, when you go forward and backwards, you're moving forward and backwards, but when you go left and right, you're rotating. So the default movement is rotating on the left and right. We didn't make it so that you could map the different buttons to this. We sort of said, okay, you can do it yourself. Uh, 3JS has examples of it moving. You can do it yourself if you want different settings. We are really, really happy with the settings uh, that we have. We've been using them for years in alt space, and, and they're amazing. So basically, it's forward and backwards with the sticks. If you do the right hand, left and right, that's rotation. If you do the, the left hand, left and right, that's um, moving left and right uh, kind of sideways movements. And that's probably fine. So that's how we got it here. All right. If you think about it, this is pretty cool. Take a look. Hey, that does a whole bunch of stuff right there. We have our skybox. We have a floor. This is orbit controls, which you can't use in VR, but outside of VR, but you would use. Hey, give us some controllers. That's a laser. When it's connected, there's our movement. Here's our teleport. That's it. That's it. And you're in VR and you're operating, you're moving around. And it's like, wow. Okay. So that is better than... <laughs> <laughs> not having that, <laughs> I think, anyway. <laughs> Although, if you don't, uh, if, you know, if you roll it all your own, so to speak, if you do it all yourself, then you can control all various things in there. But um, for the most part, we're letting you control what we think you'll need to control with these parameters, uh, all with a line each kind of thing. What we've done here is we scaled something, our canvas window, because our canvas window was quite small to start off, and we found that we had to scale it in a different way when we went into VR, and we've also positioned it to a certain place. I can't, can't remember, our canvas window is right here. Yeah, that's it, like it's scale. So there was a, quite a scale difference, not sure why, but um, this was our initial scale, I think, is that scale? So this is the texture active. We haven't even looked at this yet, but we'll get to it in a sec. There's our texture actives. Yeah, scale and then curve. And this was opacity. All right, so um, we just did some rejigging of that stuff when when we're in VR. So this, this means we're in VR, basically. And then we set up a label. We added a label saying, hey, you can use the trigger to drag, use the stick to move, and use Y and B to teleport. Uh, we put that font on the puzzle, that's on the texture active, and we told the scrambler when we mouse down on the scrambler, remove those instructions after four seconds. So it, those instructions stay there until you press on the scrambler and then they will fade out uh, after four seconds. Okay, and we're only running that once, that mouse down once. Here's the texture actives. This again is very straightforward. For our texture active, we 
it, it's kind of like a registering thing. This is texture actives, plural. We have to pass in all of our texture active objects from up above. We have two of them. We pass in this other stuff right here. This is the layer, the layers. Well, the layers. This is the layer that you uh, would put those on and by the way the make panels will sync that up so we don't have to worry about it anyway that's sort of like registering we've got these texture actives and that will tell 3js to or um to send well the signals get sent to createjs which go into zim and all that's sort of set up through the texture actives here and then here's the make panel so this is a helper helper function available in the in the three module that if, if you're just making a panel, which quite often you're doing um, with texture active, you don't have to. You could put it on a cube or a sphere or a cylinder, et cetera. And if you're doing that, then you wouldn't use make panel. You would um, uh, go take a look at the other examples, uh, the other bubblings and the other uh, explorers for that and see how to do that. But uh, here, it's nice and easy to make a panel, and we pass in the texture active, our texture actives object, the scale, and I think that's curvature. And then we're adding that to the scene. And here's the backing, same kind of deal, it's a minus curvature. We're adding it to the scene, and we have to flip this around in its rotation. So it ends up being in behind it. Okay, that that adds our texture actives. Wow. That registers them. This adds them. And up above, we made them way up here. Here's the backing. Here's the puzzle. Nice. So welcome to Zim. In Zim, we've been going for about 10 years almost, and we can do way more than make puzzles. So don't just think, oh, you know, we can make a puzzle and add it to VR. We can do hundreds of things if not thousands of things it's a general canvas framework uh all sorts of things you can draw and, and that's what that video is about there's a lot of stuff there in that video you saw us page through a book that's a zim book that you can put on there just as easy as a scrambler hey it's a book add these pages you know wow we can now page through a zim book so you can have a book on a wall you can draw with a pen you can drag things on lines you have particle emitters you've got um, I don't know, just all sorts of stuff. You can make games and puzzles and data visualizations on surfaces in VR. All right. I think that's probably long enough, huh? <laughs> uh, this is, it wasn't an explore. How long have we been going? 52 minutes. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, so let's come on back to something visual here to say goodbye. So once again, this thing right here sort of explains this video. Watch the video. It explains what we're imagining could happen in VR. It's no, nowhere near all of what could happen. There's the little laser right there on that picture. There's the laser. So it's a tube and it's got a line coming from it. And then the gun has a little handle and the ray gun has some rings on it. The sword has a little ring on the front of it. The pen has a little uh, cone, I guess, on the front of it. There you go. Here's some examples of texture active. So now you could put these things into VR as well. Uh, so looking forward to seeing what you're making. Come and visit us at zimjs.com slash discord, zimjs.com slash slack, or right up here. Uh, we'd love to talk to you about things and help you through anything you need. Our docs are available under docs. Um, there you go. So you can do a search on something if you want to see the, the three module. Three, like that. Here's three, and it has a bunch of links, including this one for VR, as well as uh, examples, stuff about the parameters. And then underneath, we've got the XR controllers. So you can open that up, read about what's going on with the controllers, uh, see an example get the various properties and events. So there's all the numbers of the buttons and things that um, will tell you which buttons are pressed when you get a get a, a press down or a touch start. Okay, and there's general events as well that have been added. Here's the, the information on movement. Here's the information on the teleport. Okay. 
So, I am Dr. Abstract. This has been a What's Bubbling a Zim Have a great day or night, and all the best. Cheers.